What is WireGuard? It's the new trend in VPN connectivity and it is gradually replacing IPsec. WireGuard securely encapsulates IP packets over UDP. You basically add a WireGuard interface, configure it with your private key and your peers' public keys, and then you send packets across it. WireGuard doesn't really care about pushing configuration to client or key distribution, you are left to worry about those details. This is different from OpenVPN or Ike Types VPN by design. All issues of key distribution and pushed configurations are out of scope of WireGuard. These are issues left to other layers. The protocol mimics the model of SSH. Both parties have each other's public keys, and then they're simply able to begin exchanging packets through the interface. WireGuard works by simply adding a network interface or multiple, like ETH0 or WLAN0. You typically call the interface WG0, 1, 2 and so on. This network interface can then be configured normally using if config or the IP address as well as IP route command. You can use the other built-in utilities in Linux used for ordinary network to manage the tunnel and routes. The specific WireGuard aspects of the interface are configured using the WG tool. This interface acts as a tunnel interface. WireGuard associates the tunnel IP addresses with public keys and remote endpoint. It is meant to be easily implemented in very few lines of code, and easily auditable for security vulnerabilities. And it's also built into the Linux kernel at this point. So any Linux-based machine running basic kernels can use the WireGuard protocol without having to rely on other external tools. If you're using WireGuard as a protocol, you're sending UDP packets on a specific port so that traffic is not going to look like regular web traffic. Which will probably not work if you are behind a corporate firewall. As opposed to OpenVPN which can show up as port 443. So WireGuard is a UDP point-to-point -point tunnel between two peers. On one end, you might have a peer that's acting like a router. And behind that WireGuard peer, you could have a whole network, physically connected. The floor of WireGuard is from user space, the WireGuard sends a packet, using normal means. The WireGuard tunnel shows up like a regular interface. This can be managed by normal Linux kernel commands and the ordinary routing table. So, you can manage it with tools you are already familiar with. It would be like a normal interface the name would be WG0 and so on. When the WireGuard interface gets the traffic, the WireGuard process takes over. It looks at the destination IP address of that packet to determine which peer that packet should be sent to. So, in this example here, we are creating a tunneled network between Alice and Bob, and this is for network 192.168.1.0/24. So, we are putting this information in the allowed IPs parameter. And then the WireGuard will encrypt the packet for that peer and send it off. On the other end, WireGuard gets an encrypted UDP packet, it decrypts the packet. As it is doing the decryption, it will learn which peer sent it, and as a result which public key should be used to decrypt the traffic. And then the packet is handed to the Linux networking stack. So to get started we configure a public-private key pair. The next step is to share the public keys with the party you are wanting to communicate with. You can generate the keys using the WG Gen Key utility. The WG Gen Key generates the private key. 
You can then derive a public key from the private key. You can do that using the utility wgpub key. After you generate the keys, you configure both machines specifying what IP address to be used on the WireGuard interface. So both parties, Alice and Bob exchange the public keys like we see here. Once they exchange the keys all it takes is a simple configuration on both sides and traffic starts flowing, no phase 1, 2 and all the crap that comes with Ike and IPsec. In this example here, we have three Linux machines, Alice and Bob, and then the internet box simulating the internet. The internet box is connected to the lab network, the internet box does network address translation to hide the IPs of the Alice and Bob box. If we look at the Alice box, it has IP address quad 1, with a default gateway of triple 1.2. I will just disable interfaces ENS 4 and 5 as they are not in use. For simplicity I am using a slash 24. Now let's look at the internet. ENS 3 is connected to Alice and it has IP address triple 1.2. Let's look at Bob's machine, it has the address quad 2 and the default gateway of triple 2.1. If we look at the internet box, ENS4 has IP address triple 2.1. The ENS5 is the interface connecting to the internet. In order for traffic to get routed, we need to enable IP forwarding, this is done using sysctl-w followed by net.ipv4.ip underscore forward equal 1. This enables routing on the box allowing traffic to get routed between the three interfaces, Bob, Alice, and the internet interface. Now, we need to set up network address translation, this can be done using the IP tables, dash t nat, dash a for append, we will append this to the chain post routing, we will specify that this will match if traffic gets routed and then it matches the output interface of ENS5. And we will specify the action to hide, or masquerade. I need to fix the interfaces, Alice and Bob should be connected using their ETH0 interfaces. Fixed that and spared you the pain. I have to redo my last couple of steps. We are able to access the internet which is good. Let's open a terminal and we will install the WireGuard tools, we need those in order for us to configure the WireGuard interfaces. I will do this step on both Alice and Bob. Now we need to run the WG Gen key utility and create a private key for Alice. We will then generate the public key using the WG pub key utility. We will do the same for Bob. I will then copy Alice public key to Bob and Bob public key to Alice. Let me create the wireguard.conf for interface WG0. The first section is interface. 
We will specify the private key and copy Alice private key to it. We will then specify the address of the WG interface and which port to use. We will use 51821. In the peer section, we will let WireGuard know what is the peer IP to connect to and the public key to that peer. For the peer information, we need the public key for Bob. Let me cat the public key. It is empty. Now let me check. I think I made a mistake somewhere. Let me regenerate the public key. I missed a parameter in the command. It's WG pub key. I forgot the pub key parameter. I will copy it again to Alice. Let me also do the same for Alice public key, just in case I made a typo there as well. Now, I will copy the content of Bob public key and input it in the public key parameter. I will specify the endpoint IP address for Bob, which is the quad 2 address, colon port 51, 8, 21. For allowed IPs we will allow the 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is the only traffic, we are just setting up an encrypted tunnel between Bob and Alice. Let's now create the configuration on Bob's machine. Now we need to enable the interface, we will use the system CTL enable WG at WG0 dot service to enable the configuration. Actually, it's WG dash quick. This will create the service which we can start. We will do the same on Alice's side. We will then start the service on both sides. The IP link show command shows that the interface is up. Also, the IP address command shows that the interface has an address. Let's ping across, we will ping the remote side IP and see if we are getting there.
We are able to ping between Alice and Bob. Let's run a Wireshark capture to see if we are seeing the WireGuard traffic. We do see WireGuard between Quad 1 and Quad 2. I will filter on Quad 1 to Quad 2. We see the traffic is encapsulated in UDP and running on port 51821. Let's filter on IP address quad 1 and IP address quad 2. We see that WireGuard traffic is actively going across those two devices. That is WireGuard for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for updates.